This is Brian and welcome to our third LAMP tutorial. This is installing Ubuntu. We have our virtual machine running as you can see and in our previous tutorial we booted off the ISO image. So this is all running inside a virtual machine. I simply wanted to make a separate tutorial so I could resize the recording area um, so you can see everything that's going on here. I'm going to select download updates while installing. Now you should note that doing that will increase your installation time but will take your patch time down significantly. Um, install third-party software. Um, that's kind of a hot issue in the Linux community. Um, some people are completely against proprietary software. If you are, simply uncheck that box. I, however, don't mind proprietary software. I love my MP3s, I love my flash video, everything else. So I'm going to select install this. It's recommended you have an internet connection and you should have at least 4.4 gigs of space. We'll click next. Now installing an operating system can get a bit lengthy so I may pause this video periodically. It's moments like this where the cursor just sits there. All right. Installation type. You can do something else or erase the entire disk. Now notice if you are doing this alongside Windows, which I'm not going to cover in this tutorial, there will be extra options and it will say like install alongside of op other operating system. Because this is a virtual machine, we want to in erase the disk and install Ubuntu. Now, warning, this will delete any files you have on this disk. Now, this is not your hard drive. This is the virtual hard drive of the virtual machine. When in doubt, make sure it's the virtual machine hard drive. We're going to install now. And boom, they're off. The progress bar race begins. And you will see down here, this is where the progress is, this big progress bar. And you'll get different notifications, like it'll say installing, contacting time server, doing various tasks, um, sitting there for an erroneous amount of time, not really doing anything. There it goes. The setup for Ubuntu is actually pretty user friendly. Um, select your time zone. I'm in Michigan, so I'm going to select Detroit. So this is, in case you've ever wondered where I am, I'm right here in Michigan. I'm in a little town called Battle Creek, Michigan. It's, if you ever heard of Kellogg cereal, it's the same city that makes Kellogg cereal. Um, so in case you ask, yes, the entire city smells like cereal when they cook it. Sometimes it's just awesome, sometimes it's just horrible. So let's continue. Now, like I said, um, installing an operating system is not for the faint of heart. You may run into errors. Um, this will probably take a sizable amount of time. How long? Really depends on your internet connection speed, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, whether you chose to download third-party softwares and updates while you're installing. Um, typically, a good installation ranges about 45 minutes to an hour. That does not include patching. All right, now we're going to select our keyboard layout. Click continue. Now in case you're wondering why I'm doing all of this in a virtual machine, well, A, it's extremely easy to record, and B, if we make mistakes, we can always take a snapshot and revert back to a snapshot, something we'll cover later. Um, we need to give our name, I'm just putting test, and for password, I'm just going to choose P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, that's right, password the weakest password in the history of mankind, but I'm doing it for simplicity's sake. You should choose a strong password. Um, you should also do require my password to log in and encrypt my home folder. I'm just going to choose login automatically because this is a test box that I do not care about. Click continue. And this is the exceedingly boring part of watching the installation. You just literally watch the progress bar. Um, I've only had one or two installations completely freak out and die. It's rare, but it does happen. Um, Linux does not have a blue screen of death. It has a purple screen of death. It's rare. Some people don't even know it exists. I've seen it myself. It's not pretty. You think the Microsoft blue screen of death is ugly. Ooh, you have not seen the purple screen of death. I actually want that on a t-shirt, the purple screen of death. Anyways, um, if you're so inclined, you can kind of thumb through these. And you can kind of read a little bit about Ubuntu. Um, Ubuntu has a software center, so you... Oh, I need to back up here. Linux has what's called a package. Um, 
basically, uh, this is a Debian derivative, which means you'll have dub packages. And the software center allows you to search, like a mini Google, and you can say, I want a solitaire game, or a PHP editor, or LAMP and it should be prepackaged ready to go. So you don't have to configure the software, you don't have to do anything other than download it and click install. And many times it's right on the same page. You literally hit the install button, it downloads, installs, configures, sets it up, and runs it right for you. Very simple, very easy to use. My daughter can do it. I mean, come on. Um, it comes stocked with a ton of software. It comes with um, LibreOffice, which if you don't know what that is, it's a free version of Office. It rivals Microsoft Office. It's a fork of um, OpenOffice. Um, basically what happened there was um, OpenOffice decided to start charging money, I think, and then they forked it and it became LibreOffice. And it's, it's compatible with Microsoft Office. If you're a college student, you don't want to spend a lot of money, don't buy Office, use LibreOffice. I'm probably mispronouncing that. I'm sure I'll get fan mail for that one. Um, you can install pretty much, this is where you're going to get my Linux speech. I'm not a Linux fan. I'm not even a Linux guru, but I'm amazed at the amount, I mean just the massive amount of free software that's out there. Anything that you can think of, there is a free open source version of it. For example, you're watching th this video cast. I'm recording it on Kazam. Kazam is free. On Windows, I'd have to pay for that. Well, there's some free versions on Windows, but you know what I mean. For example, Office, we were just talking about that. Microsoft Office costs hundreds of dollars. LibreOffice, free. You can't beat free. I'm sorry. I made a lot of money in the software industry selling my software, but those days are long gone. Sad to say. Um, music. Um, Ubuntu is very media oriented. Um, I love the multimedia features in Ubuntu. I love Rhythmbox, playing my MP3s, I love watching videos. Um, one thing I do love is Ubuntu One Cloud Storage, which I wonder if there's a slide for that. Nope. Anyways, um, Ubuntu One Cloud Storage is you automatically get five gigs of cloud storage. What is cloud storage? Um, Think of a cloud, but instead of filled with raindrops, it's filled with servers, storage servers that you have access to, access to free of charge, cloud storage. You have five gigs of cloud storage on the Ubuntu One Cloud. What that means is you can set specific folders and say synchronize with cloud. So anytime you modify one of the files in that folder or you copy something in or out of it, it'll upload that, modify it on the cloud. So if you have your home folder synchronize to the cloud, your computer dies, you do a fresh, fresh installation, reinstall Ubuntu One, pulls all your files down, and you're right back where you were. Easy to clean, easy to use. Um, comes with uh, Firefox, you can use NoScript, you can also install Chrome, um, Flash support. I would recommend the 32-bit version if you're going to do that. I'm running the 64-bit version and back in the day it was a little tricky to get the 64-bit version of Flash installed because they didn't actually support 64-bit for a while there. Um, in case you're wondering, we are installing the 32-bit version um, simply because I don't have the horsepower to do 64-bit virtualization. Yes, here's a LibreOffice in action is what they're talking about. Actually, I'm really, really impressed with their software. Um, Ubuntu is highly customizable. Um, we are running the desktop version of this for these tutorials instead of the server version because I want a desktop that you can see, you can watch me interact with, and you can do it on your own. Sometimes command lines lose people. And that's it for the slideshow. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this and we will wait until the installation is over. All right, we're back and we are still installing. Well, if you're really bored and you kind of want to get a jump start, I am going to be following the w3schools.com PHP guide. So feel free to go to w3schools.com slash PHP and start digging into some of these. I'm not going to do their tutorials verbatim, but I am going to follow similar syntax to this. Um, meanwhile, I will be sprinkling in the LAMP stuff, like how to actually install LAMP, how to configure and interact with MySQL, things that they just don't cover on here. Once again, that's w3schools.com slash php, and I will see you when this installation is done. Alright, if you got to this screen, that means your installation was successful. 
go ahead and hit restart now and we're just gonna sit through this and watch it reboot alright you'll see Ubuntu shutting down switch over to VirtualBox and you can see that it is currently running and you can see a little snapshot or a preview of what's going on inside the machine and it says please remove any installation media from the tray and press enter Now once this thing boots up, you're going to want to patch your server. Um, some people don't believe in patching. Um, I do. It's just one of those things. I mean, patches are there for a reason. A, they keep you from getting hacked. I know this is a test box. We don't really care too much about it. But at the same time, you also find that patches have critical flaws and fixes. That's why they're called a patch. Now this will take a few seconds to boot up the first time you load it. It will get significantly faster after the first time. You can see our little hard drive light down here is going crazy along with our network light. But I just want to pull this up and give you a quick tour of Ubuntu. There we go, now it's starting up. And the more RAM you give it, the faster it will go. I'm just kind of going over some PHP tutorials here. You can do it, virtual machine. We believe you. You can do it. Alright, once you've made it to this point, you're pretty much going to know for sure that your, your computer is going to run just fine. If you've gotten an error message before you've gotten to this point, um, you will see a login screen here eventually. But if you get an error message, you will um, want to contact the support forums and see exactly what's going on. If you chose the optional login, you will have a username and password. I chose to log in automatically. This is our Ubuntu desktop. Um, this is called Ubuntu Unity. This is our dashboard. If you press the Windows key, you'll get this, and you can actually search for things like... Uh, update manager this is your taskbar and you just mouse over things and see there's your home folder this uses Nautilus as the file explorer and like I said it's gonna run a little slow the first time you run this thing um, it will start speeding up as the virtual because you're gonna remember the virtual machines hard drive is growing as files are being created in the background so this is the default file structure if you've never worked with Linux before, um, this is called root, this slash. And then you have all these folders in it. We're not going to cover all of these, but some that we are going to cover are going to be the ver, um, etsy, and home. Home is where the heart is. Now, home is your home folder. This is similar to like my documents in Windows. And you can see here's our profile test, and inside of here is where all our files are going to live. When we eventually install Apache, there's going to be a dub 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 folder inside of var. Alright, so let's just close this out. And you can see there's some software on here, like there's Firefox. You can actually browse the web with this bad boy. Um, there's LibreOffice and a bunch of those. There's Software Center, Ubuntu One, which I talked about, Cloud Storage, System Settings, which this is how you can go in and tweak various things. Alright. And this is similar to control panel in Windows, like you can actually go in and you'll probably see me once in a while do this where I will auto hide the launcher. Sorry, I thought I called that a taskbar earlier. Um, in virtual machines it's very difficult to get it to come back on, but you get the concept there. And you have workspaces, which are multiple desktops. If you're from Windows, this is a new concept to you. You won't know what this means, but basically you have four 
monitors built into one. And whoa, holy updates, Batman. 179 updates. We got some updating to do here. Now, before we update, I'm actually going to shut this down. I want to show you something. Oh, real quick, install drivers. If you have proprietary drivers, um, this will pop up and say, okay, these drivers should be downloaded and activated. So let's actually download and activate that. This is what I wanted to show you is your authentication password. Um, if you're from Windows XP, you've never seen anything like this before. If you're from Windows Vista and Windows 7, this is similar to user account control. Actually, they stole the idea from Linux. Whenever you do something that's going to affect the system, it's going to ask you for a password. So enter the password you gave it during installation. And hit authenticate. And it'll download and install that additional proprietary driver. Remember during setup we said download and install additional drivers. Well, this is part of it. This is really helpful if you're using this on a physical box and you have like a really cool video card or something like that. It'll actually pull down a better driver for you. So you can have wobbly windows and all sorts of effects. So we're just going to wait for this to install. And while that's installing, let me kind of show you how to find things here. You just go into Dash and let's say you have no idea what you're looking for. You want to say view videos. You just start typing in vid and well there's videos folder. Or how about movie? There's a movie player. So you can see just by typing in you can get like if we wanted monitor you can get more granular in your search. And there's different things here like here's home, here's filters, so these would be programs, these would be files, and music, and videos. So you can actually get really granular here. Also, here's your trash can. So if you ever delete anything, you'll see garbage in your trash can. You can simply right click and empty the trash. Now, if you don't like these icons, because we're really not going to use LibreOffice in these tutorials, simply right click and unlock from launcher. Whoops. very bare bones, very minimalistic. Here's system settings. We've been in there. Ubuntu Software Center. I want to show you guys this real quick while we're downloading and installing that driver in the background. And this may take a little bit longer because we are downloading and installing that driver. and That's pretty system intensive for that virtual machine. The Ubuntu Software Center um, allows you to, well, get anything. I mean, it's literally a software store filled with free software. I mean, everything on here, well, I shouldn't say everything, most everything on here is free. Once in a while, you find something that's not free, but it's few and far between. So, like, let's let this load for a minute. Like I said, this is going to be horrendously slow because I am installing that driver in the background here. Alright. You can see the software center starting to come up. And it's already got some applications in here. And there's also some categories. So like you can go into developer tools or educations or games. And there's already some stuff in here like Genie. Genie's an IDE. Um, we may actually touch on Genie in a little while. Um, one thing Genie does, if I can get it to load here, is it's an IDE that people use for, you guessed it, PHP programming. Ta-da! Very simple, easy to use editor. Um, it's kind of like a, a notepad on steroids, if you will. See, that's what some code would look like, and that's what the actual program would look like. Now, if you wanted to install this, you'd simply click the Install button. And then it may prompt you for that authentication password, and you'll see a little icon up here indicating that something's installing. You can see your currently installed programs and your history. And you can navigate in and around. It's pretty amazing how much stuff is out here just dirt free and you can take a moment and just kinda look around and see what's out here and if ever you're looking for anything like let's say you like me you like C++ oh no matches hmm I'm willing to bet that once we update there'll be more matches but anyways let's say you want a uh, an image viewer there's gobs and gobs of image viewers out there. 
Now, one thing you should note, you see this little orange thing over here, when you get close, that scroll bar pops up. You actually mouse into that, click, and then scroll. That's one thing people don't like about Unity. It kind of does and does not bother me. I really don't care. Let's close that. You see we're still installing our driver. One quick shortcut, Control-Alt-T, will bring up the terminal window. We will be getting very familiar with the terminal window. This is where you will type in actual commands. For example, ls for list. That will list contents of a hard drive or CD root. So you can change the root, then ls-l, show you the contents of the root drive. This is a virtual machine, so there's really not a whole lot on there. I'm going to pause this video while my driver is installing. All right, after that proprietary driver was installed, um, we're going to close. And nine times out of ten, they don't want you to reboot. And what we're actually going to do now is we're going to shut this down. I'm going to show you how to create a snapshot. Are you sure you want to close all the programs and shut down? Yes. We'll let Ubuntu shut down gracefully. All right, now our virtual machine is powered off. We're going to go to Snapshots, and we want to take a snapshot. And we're just going to call this Fresh, if I can spell, Install. And we'll call this New Install of Ubuntu. And you see that's our current state, it's Fresh Install. Now what that means is if we do something and we screw up, we can revert back to the snapshot. See how you can clone it, you can delete it, you can restore snapshot. So if you start this virtual machine and do something horribly, horribly wrong, you don't know what you did, but oh my gosh, into the world, shut the box down, click snapshots, go back to restore snapshots after you've selected the one that you want. And this little current state will show you where you currently are. So we're just going to start this thing back up. I'm going to show you how to patch your machine. I can go ahead and close that. And this is why I really like virtualization technologies. It really allows you to explore without fear of spending months and days fixing whatever you broke. But that's kind of how I learned computers. Uh, a friend of mine named Scott a long time ago had a computer graveyard going on in his basement and we would f you know, cannibalize these systems together and then turn around and sell them to other people. And it was it was a very big learning experience because you got to learn what was compatible and what wasn't and this was back when internet was oh man I think I had a blistering 14k dial-up connection and I was so thrilled the day I got a 28k modem oh I think I did the happy dance around my house alright so notice at the top of the screen it says Ubuntu test box fresh install There's my Firefox. I'm just trying to get a feeling for how big that size is going to, or that monitor is going to be. And once you get to a fully functional desktop, we're going to actually open updates. The update manager, you can either search for it using the dashboard or it will pop up automatically. Just want you to be aware of how to update your machine. You can check for updates, which if it pops up, it'll automatically tell you how many updates are available. And then you can install. And you can kind of scroll through and see I've got 179 updates. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. I'm simply going to click install updates. It should prompt me for my credentials. See, there we go. And that's it. 
See you next time. I hope you found this educational and entertaining, and thank you for watching. Oh, and if you do patch your server, be sure to shut it down and do a snapshot.